Today we're going to talk you through the very important part of your caravan, which is your Truma control panel. It is probably one of the most important parts of your caravan. So let's get straight into this video and talk about how to set up the heat in your caravan and how to make sure that everything works through your Truma control panel. So we're just over here at the panel itself. Obviously what you've got to first make sure you do is turn on your electric on your van like shown here on the Bailey. It may be different if you've got a Swift or other caravans. So the first thing you do to turn the Truma heating panel is to click and hold the middle button down here. So as you can see, the panel has now came on. Now mine's been set up before, so some of the settings at the time are already set up there. So let's first go look at how we change the time on this. So we're just gonna move it along until we get on the little clock here. And then what we can do is press that on there and that will look at the time. Obviously we can move the time up and down. It's currently around 2.45. And once we've got the time, we obviously press it, that will go to the next setting and will let us set the time for the panel itself. There you go, there's a time set. If you've got a swift caravan and you press the black button, that needs resetting every time. Okay, so on the panel here, we've got a few different options. We've obviously got the heating for the caravan or motorhome or RV. We've got the, so got the heating for the water as well, which we can set in different settings. We've got the power source used for the heating, and then we've got the fan system inside. We've also got a couple of buttons at the bottom that we'll look at in a little bit. So before we get onto the heating system itself, we're gonna look about the power options, because that's really important. So we come on the third icon here, and we click in once. Currently it's set to gas, so that's good if you're off-grid or you're somewhere there's no electric at all. That will be just gas power. We've got mix one, which is gas and also mixed in with electric on one kilowatt. That's quite good if you're on a site where you want to heat up the van quite quickly, but you haven't got a lot of electricity. The next option is mix two. So that's using the gas and the electric, but the electric's down two kilowatts. Again, very good if you want to heat up the system quickly or you want to heat up the hot water for a shower. The second last option here is electric one. That's one kilowatt of electric. So that's quite useful if you're on a place where you don't use your gas, but you have an electric hookup, but it doesn't have a lot of power to it. And the last option is electric two, and that is two kilowatts of electric being used, but no gas at all. So we're gonna switch mine back to gas because I'm currently not on a pitch because we're in lockdown three. So this first icon here flashing is the heating settings. So if I click on that, I can turn the temperature up Let's just set it up to 30 and click there and it will use the internal sensor to work out what the temperature is and it will engage the boiler to get up to the correct temperature. The second option we've got is the water. So we'll just put on the water option here. You can see it's calling for heat with a little flashing light icon there. And we can set it to eco, which is about 40 degrees, give or take normally. And we've also got hot, which is about 60 degrees. If you've got a slightly older panel, it will actually have 40 and 60. And the last option you've got is boost. So again, if you need that water quickly, like for showers and things like the van, you would set the boost. Preferably make sure you've also got it on mix to kilowatt because that will give you the power that you need. So again, if we click on that, on the water, and we'll just put it on hot there. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is error codes. I purposely set it up to actually give me an error code. You can see that there is a little triangle here to tell me that there is some kind of error with the system. So I move my cursor along and I come to the little flashing icon and click on it. It will give me an error number. And what I would do is Google that error number to work out what the error is and how to fix the problem. I know that that error is because there is no gas, so the boiler can't light. And we're gonna go outside a second and, and set that up. If I want to clear the error, I go over the icon again, click on it. And then the error itself will eventually disappear. So as you can see, I've moved here and the error is completely gone because I fixed the problem. In this case, there was no gas. I've turned the heating off to stop with calling gas. Before you set up your water heating to go, what you do need to do is make sure that the internal tank in terms of the boiler is filled with water. You don't want to put that on before then because otherwise you've got the possibility of burning through the thermal couple of other things inside that can cause damage. The last icon we've got here that's flashing is for the fans. So we click on that. We've got a few different settings, obviously off. So the first option we have on here is vent. And what that does is it circulates the air in the van, but that will only be there if you've got no heating on and you haven't got the hot water on. If you've had the hot water on and then you put it on, it will pump out quite a bit of heat, so be careful with that. So let's just put that onto vent and that will circulate air around the van 
And then we've also got the settings on how high we want to put that number up. So tens obviously max, ones being the least. And what that will do is circulate the air around the van. And we can see that the circulator icons came up here to show that we are circulating the air in the van. Quite good if you're in a quite a warm place and you want to circulate the air in the van if you don't have aircon. When you have the heating system on, it will allow you to put it in eco mode, which means it saves the battery and it will be on a low fan setting. So the last setting there is high and that's really good if you want to get the air around the van quickly or if you've got other vans like the Swift and Coachman's, so I used to put their pipes outside. So in order to get the heat for the back for the children and the toilet, you had to put it on the high mode. And also I would recommend in that case, also having it mixed too, because it will get the heating at the back a lot quicker, particularly if you want to warm up the van itself. At the bottom here, this is a little timer. So we can start the heating, particularly if we're going out. Let's say we were going out, like it's two o'clock now, and I could set the heating that I think I'm gonna come back here about four o'clock. What that will do is it will start the current settings that are on there at that time. And I can also set an end time if I need to, and that will then warm the van through, as you can see here, at a certain temperature between those times. So in a couple of hours, the heating would come on, and I can also do the same for the water. If I want the water to come on, at that time as well. So I've just put all the settings and that's enabled the timer as you can see at the bottom here. So the heating's gonna come on two o'clock till six o'clock. The water's not gonna come on. It's also gonna be on low fan as well. The last icon, but a very important icon that we're gonna look at is the actual spanner here. And that has quite a few things. So firstly, the offset. This is the temperature difference between the sensor and what you think it is. So as a sensor might not give the exact reading. So you can adjust this to get it a little bit offset from there, a little bit lower than what the temperature thinks on the sensor in order to get the heat and the kick in at the right temperature for you. The next option we have here is the temperature. We can set it to be centigrade like it currently is, or we can change it to Fahrenheit if we are abroad. I'll leave that back in centigrade here. Next option we've got is how bright the panel is. So it's on currently on six, you can set it all to 10. I'll just scroll it down and it'll get down to one if you don't want it to be too bright. Next option we've got is we can change the clock we can put it in 24 hour mode or 12 hour mode, depending on what we fancy. Leave mine back in 24. Next option we've got in the settings menu is the language. So the options we've got are English, French, Italian, or I think that is German there for Deutsch. Next option we've got is the index, which I've never ever really used, but we can change the numbers on here. I'm not gonna mess with those. That's more for an engineer. And the reset, if your heating's not working the way you want it to, you've got a few issues, you might want to reset the boiler. And what that's doing there is it's going to just reset the boiler because sometimes you have a couple of niggles or things don't work and it goes in a bit of a huff. And you can see it set the time back where it was before. In the top left here is a playlist of videos that help you with beginner caravanners or more seasoned caravanners who want to learn more hints and tips about your caravan. And in the other bottom corner is a video that YouTube has picked for you. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and also subscribe to our channel to get more hints and tips and to follow our journey as we come out of lockdown three, or if it's later on, just to follow our journey in our life of being a caravan family of five and enjoying our life and experience and freedom.